Hey guys, this is Alan Fregman and Miguel Campos for TD Survival. And welcome back after this uh, summer break. Yeah, we uh, Miguel went on a short vacation and then <laughs> I went on vacation and then I just... Yeah, you really didn't had too many vacations, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was in Spain for holidays, so... Yeah, yeah. my vacation was not that special, but, <laughs> <laughs> well, but anyway, we're anyway, here. We're back. Yeah, so uh, we want to talk about Sublime today. Yeah. Uh, it's our favorite text editor. Yeah, sure thing. I, yeah, I showed it to M Miguel a couple months ago, I think. Uh, uh, like, Sublime? Yeah, when was it? Like last year? or? N yeah, a couple, a couple of years ago. <laughs> it was it years ago, really? Yeah. <laughs> time flies, okay. Yeah. I, I felt like it was a month ago. Months ago. Yeah, the, the times go by, man. You're yeah. getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but you. Yeah, so, uh, so Sublime Text is an awesome editor. You can get it to sublimetext.com slash two for version two. Uh, he's also making Sublime Text 3, but it's still in beta and it's not 100% yet, so we don't recommend it. Uh, you can see on the homepage a bunch of cool stuff that it can do. Uh, it's free to try uh, indefinitely. You, yeah, it, exactly. He's, he, the guy who makes it is super nice and super talented at, at, at writing. It's an awesome package. Uh, and he's super nice to actually let you try it uh, and see how awesome it is as long yeah. as you want. And then... Yeah, exactly. The only thing that you're gonna get it's a little uh, annoying uh, pop-up uh, yeah, menu everyone, from time every to time, but it doesn't block anything. Yeah, it's every just every few saves, you. you got a little warning. It's like, hey, you know, sub Sublime costs money. Would you like to buy a license? Yeah. And uh, eventually, sure. you'll feel bad because you because you realize how awesome it is, and yeah. <laughs> and you'll want to buy one. Yeah, it's making blood. I didn't pay it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. I I paid one. I I, I thought it was great. Anyway. Uh, I, I have spoken of Sublime before in my blog, uh, in darkvertex.com, which is my personal blog. I have a post called A Few Reasons Why I Love Sublime Text Too. You can watch that. A lot of the stuff in that video we're going to cover yeah. a little bit more in detail and yeah, more, it's more, introductory. more fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so let's get started. Sublime Text looks like this. And you can, you have a... Let's see if you open a, a page yeah, here. Different tabs. Yeah, you have yeah. different tabs. You can pick them out. You can float them back in. Yeah, for, it's pretty cool. For me, the most special uh, feature, uh, like uh, like a first see, it's the uh, the mini scroll down uh, or mini the mini browser. I think it's mini called. Browser. Yeah. I don't know how it's called. It's the mini text. Yeah, I think I think it's called mini browser here. It's um, a sidebar. I don't know. The mini map. Yeah, mini, mini map. map. Okay. Mini map. The yeah. mini map is awesome. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's... When you have a big file or when you know your own file, like um, this is a module that I had, um, I, I can see like, I know like, oh, this is the declaration that I was doing for this big dictionary here. And and once, especially if you wrote your own code, you you become you become accustomed to seeing the patterns of it, of yeah. the colors and so on. Yeah, exactly. You, you start to see patterns or a little um, difference on the code that it can uh, allow you to, to go straight to this part of the code. Yeah, exactly. And then you just click and then you're yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. It's, so it's instead of read, you go more in a visual way. Absolutely. And uh, you probably have noticed that the colors are very nice by default. It's a yeah, lovely theme. Yeah, that's uh, the first uh, text editor like uh, for coding or, or that I never change a single color. <laughs> Normally it's yeah. awful, the colors. There's a, there's other colors. Yeah, I think it's under preferences, color scheme. You can try oh, some out. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a few. Um, I never Some of them are horrible. Some of them are tasteful. Okay. Like uh, pastels and dark is not so bad. Uh, it's, no, it's not as bad. I like my classic one. There's even, there's even one called Twilight. Twilight, <laughs> yeah, if you, you're fan of uh, these movies, so um, you can use it, no? Yeah, Which it's a little darker. What? She like vampires. And uh, I saw online that someone made a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Not kidding. It's, a, oh, wow. it's amazing. Um, but I'm going to switch back to the default, which is Monokai. Monokai. Which is very nice. Anyway, so uh, a couple of features. Uh, the, probably the strongest feature in Sublime is the multi-cursor uh, function. Yeah. Which is basically, you know, you know when, you, when you have your, when you're selecting text and you see a little blinking line, that's your cursor. Yeah. And you can have as many as you want in Sublime. You can just add them all over the place. I'm holding down Control and clicking with my left mouse button. And they're everywhere. And you can select random things. And of course, this doesn't seem that useful right now. But if you start using it in conjunction with other things, like say I want to replace the word self, um, I could uh, I could highlight it one by one. Uh, I could also 
uh, I believe, drag with my middle mouse button. Yeah. You can do like a square selection, which is pretty cool. Very, very useful. And if you're, if you, you can also use a hotkey, and we're going to talk about a lot of hotkeys, uh, which is uh, Control D, which selects the next uh, s substring based on your current selection. So you have to have a self dot. Yeah. Then it's going to find self dot next, anywhere next else. Self, next, self, and so here on. you see the cursor starts at the beginning and then at the end it's pretty easy to just like press the left arrow and you get your cursor. Yeah, the right you place. can. Uh, let's say you you want to to use myself or <laughs> yeah, yourself exactly or myself like or yourself. <laughs> yeah, and it's you easy to to change it in, on uh, all at the same time. Exactly, and and it makes things like renaming uh, variables super easy. Yeah. Um, and it's just a wonderful feature. It's yeah, really yeah, the best. Especially, let's say you, you you are making several functions and you want to to change one of the variables or only one function. Exactly. Yeah. For all the the functions that use the same variable, just, yeah. just for this one. So it's Control D and so on. Yeah, and then it's it's a great feature. And just about anything related to text that you can do in Sublime, you can do with multiple cursors. Yeah. Just about any other hotkey you find that was gonna we're gonna show you does other cool things. You can use it with multiple cursors, which is great. And of course, to escape the multi-cursor multi -cursor, uh, thing, uh, you can, let's say if I make a few, you can just press the escape button. Yeah, escape, or just click in another position without any of the... Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, with, you can a, click somewhere with else. a shortcut. Yeah, if, I, I, I tend to be a lot control, of... Uh, yeah. I'm very keyboard heavy when I code in, Sub in Sublime. Yeah. So I, I use the S key a lot. Yeah, you should uh, <laughs> keyboard. If you want to pretend, only use it with uh, with the mouse. <laughs> yeah, so I think it will not work as well. <laughs> yeah, so that's a multi cursor. It's super useful. Uh, you can do other things like there's a, an awesome build system, which uh, what what it is basically is you you press the hotkey Control B and it's going to try to do something with your file. And there's a few pre built ones. The Python one in this case tries to use your system Python to run the existing script, which is cool. If you have like a, I don't know, print hello world. Oops. Hello world. And press control B and you get nothing. Yeah, because it's not a PY. <laughs> oh, no, but it is a PY. It's a PY. Yeah, I think actually, um, oh, uh, uh, oh, sorry, it took us, I, I think something is lagging. Maybe the the yeah, capture is recording. Yeah, nine point nine seconds <laughs> to print "Hello World." It's the new world record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I think the, the the recording program is slowing me down. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so anyway, that's the that's that's the result of my script. Um, I can also that that what that thing that opened was called the console, and it shows me the output. I can also open it by pressing. Control and tilde on most American keywords, or this yeah. little character here. Yeah, one one thing, guys, you don't need to copy right now all the shortcuts. We will yeah. post it on the description of the video, yeah. so you can just uh, copy paste or print from there. <laughs> yeah, you can you try wish. try it yourself. We're just yeah. gonna talk about why yeah. they're useful. Yeah, exactly. We have a plenty. <laughs> we have a small list of hotkeys which are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so um, the console is great. It's an actual full full fledged Python console, so you, you already have everything you could want. Um, you can <laughs> print Hello World there if you want. Oops. Yeah, wait, wait. Hi. Um, you can oh, also this do... this is way faster? <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's instant because it, you're already in the uh, yeah. in the interpreter. Yeah. It doesn't try to save the file. You can also do math if you want. 2 plus 2 is 4. Yeah, Amazing. Oh, I did a bad joke before with that. <laughs> <laughs> inside joke. Yeah, inside uh, joke. Very Spanish, by the way. Yeah, very Spanish joke. Uh, and other things we have, let's see. Uh, there's a great snippet system, which I'm a huge fan of. Yeah, i am become fast uh, fan today. Because yeah. <laughs> honestly, I didn't know. I was more old school, saving all my snippets in a nice folder structure. Yeah. And Copy pasting. There's a, a and then came today and uh, <laughs> it's like, hey, yeah, there's snippets in Sublime. Yeah, eh, and I say, yeah, eh, what? Oh, what? And, <laughs> yeah, and thanks God you cannot see my face. <laughs> yeah. So for example, um, uh, you can press the word class and press tab, and then you get this default snippet of the Python class so, standard. 
Yeah, so uh, you can code. put the row, yeah. So if you have troubles to remember how to defend the sub super, if it's later self or the self is going outside, uh, with these snippets, you, you will forget completely. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to remember anymore. Yeah, basic yeah. Basic stuff. Totally. <laughs> and, uh, and what's cool when you do stuff like that is you can have multiple selections of the same string throughout your code. So if you're trying to like set a variable or set something yeah. that's going to change, yeah, uh, but it, for example, it, it, for the class, it's super useful because normally, let's yeah. say you you create a new class uh, that it's called, uh, and then you want to define what the object like is, that. and then you want to define the doc string, yeah, and say something useful, and then you want to define the arguments, and then do something, yeah, about. all by tabbing all the time. Yeah, you, you just have keep some tabbing. orders, and uh, it, it goes one by one. It uh, will be nice to see how it's done. This Absolutely, way. yeah. So you go to tools and you go new snippet. And you get the default snippet, which is great. Uh, it's a bit of XML code. It's very simple. Uh, in the content tag, you put everything you need to put between the C data lines, which is the this double bracket thing, and the C data line at the top. Anything in between here is your snippet. And we, we can go with the default, for example. Uh, also, there's a couple comments here, <clears throat> um, XML comments. And uh, they're mentioning that you can have a tab trigger, which is great. A tab trigger is just like what I showed you. You yeah, type something and you yeah, press and tab, you and it's like, tab, whoa. Uh, you go first the name of the class, for example. Yeah. Next, the name of the variables. Next, and the name right, of the... Right, but this is the tab trigger. This is the word that you type first, and then you press tab, and then it happens. Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's the other one. Yeah, and now it's a good time to show you one of the hotkeys, which is control. Uh, I think it's forward slash that you call this. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, control forward slash does your comment, uh, uncommenting and recommenting lines, which is very useful. And it's mentioning here in the comment that you you can set a scope. The scope is your, your scope, <laughs> like like yeah, like yeah, with variables. Python, basically, you can, where you wanna use this. Yeah, this, if you wanna uh, use it anywhere in Python code, you wanna use it in another like HTML, for example. Yeah. Uh, so this way, you you don't have like a million filters everywhere you go. You you, you get pretty. Uh, custom, and now it's also a good time to show you the the hotkey control L, which selects a full line. And of course, you can you can do it with multiple cursors, and you can even go ahead and uh, kind of cheat, kind of, and like double clicking the word optional, press control D to select the word optional, and then you have two cursors, and then control L and select the lines, which is pretty yeah. pretty neat. Many, I think. it's many ways to. Yeah, many ways to, to do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is a tab trigger hello. We're going to save it. And it's going to save it into uh, your your username. Yeah, normally this, this folder is provided by default when you try to save the uh, snippet. So yeah, this is the user folder. Yeah, this is the user folder. This stuff will survive uh, version upgrades. You shouldn't work in the application folder because then it, it's going to get wiped when you try to upgrade. Yeah, you don't want to lose all your yeah. snippets. And you can make a folder in here with your own uh, your own folder, like uh, Miguel yeah. Snippets or whatever, and then put the stuff in there. And then you just call it what you were calling it, something that you can remember. And, and, and then do sublime. dot sublime dash snippet and save it. And then what's awesome in Sublime is that as soon as you save anything and any, any configuration changes happen, it is automatically refresh. It's done. It's, it's done. ready to use. Instantly. Correct. So now we can do hello, press tab, and now the word it's this is highlighted, and then the word snippet is highlighted. And I just tab it, uh, tab one more time, and I'm, I'm done. And as you can see here, this happens because of this uh, interesting syntax here. The uh, dollar sign, uh, curly bracket, a number, a yeah. colon, and then a word. Yeah, the word is the default value. Yeah, and, and then, then you close it with another curly bracket. And this is the order, basically, of tabbing that exactly. you can uh, use. And then what what's cool is that the number is there for a reason because it's you can repeat it multiple times, and which is what we we saw with the class. Snippet. Yeah, exactly. So you can type once and it spread on, for example, a pre-made function or exactly. a class generator or something like that. Yeah, I have, for example, here um, a progress bar snippet. I have a few snippets. I'm probably going to share them as an add-on at some point, but uh, I have a, a number of yeah, stuff yeah. to much related Sublime things. 
Yeah, we need to clean up a little yeah. before. Yeah, we want to. I want to clean it up a little bit before, but yeah. Well, actually, we because we are a team, but we'll be done. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly my code <laughs> and, for and this and one. Um, <laughs> so we have a, an example here. I have the word bar, which is everywhere, everywhere, which is the name of the variable for this progress bar uh, declaration that I'm doing in Softimage and scripting. And if you don't know scripting, then uh, whatever. But uh, this is this is how you declare a, a progress bar in Softimage. And as you can see, I start with the, the variable name, and it's going to highlight everything here, and then it's going to go to the next one, which is this one, this one, and so on and so on. And it doesn't actually have, have to be in order. Like, you can say number two can be down here, and then number three can be over here, and number four can be down here. Yeah, we we'll can be, go all over the place. Jump in, back and forward. Exactly, yeah. but, but it will work eventually. You yeah. Will fin finish the timing process. <laughs> yeah. And you can add a description. If you, The description will be right next to the auto completion yes. thing. So if you do a progress bar, it'll say your Exercise completion and then what it does. So it's it, it's not something that it's in the default uh, example snippet, but you can just add it. Just type in the word description and make it a tag and close your tag. Just put some text in between. Pretty simple. Yeah. And like it's like I said before, it's instant. You just be like it says hello. And it's gonna be available the second I press Control S. If I do hello, oops, actually I should have said hello, and it, it says hello. Say, yeah, it's actually it's there before you before you select because yeah. if not, it's uh, obviously not gonna show. Up. Yeah, and you guys are seeing some stuff that you probably won't see. This is some some of my own uh, yeah, auto completion it, stuff that I'm gonna share another at another time. Exactly. So it's don't don't be scared if you yeah. don't, don't see it, all the list. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff is uh, some custom stuff that I'm gonna show you another time. And uh, that's that's snippets. They're super useful. You can just keep making more snippet files and keep yeah. adding to your repertoire. Or as much as you have, as much as fast one. you can work. Yeah, exactly. Like at I, some point, you don't need to to learn coding. Just uh, <laughs> take all the just snippets. take all the snippets. Yeah. I I have some for like. A uh, new plugin, for example, and I have my. Yeah, this is pretty similar to the uh, um, plugin wizard from. Softimage. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, you have the, oh, I, you can almost take the take the same code and make it into a snippet. I'm gonna share mine eventually, but uh, basically, yeah, <laughs> you are awesome, and then. Makes sublime things. <laughs> yeah, I like that joke. Um, boo. boo. <laughs> and I have other yeah. ones like exercise call for collection, which I'm typing all the time. Yeah. And I change the 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 variable, and a bunch of other ones like I don't know, write command, register command. That's little stuff, and it really helps me cut a little bit faster when I'm doing things. So that's snippets. I hope I didn't talk too long about that. Uh, the next topic we want to show is package control. Actually, no. Actually, before we go into package control, which is awesome, let's just briefly mention projects. Okay. Projects are over here in the project menu. By default, when you open Sublime, you're just in a default generic session, and yep. that's fine. And actually, one of the awesome features in Sublime is that uh, you can type away a bunch of stuff <laughs> um, and close the, the program, and it's going to remember it as yeah. is. Yeah, exactly. You it, don't even it, have to save. Yeah, it's uh, like Google Chrome. It has also this option, I think. It's, uh, it's like yes, it remember tabs. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, it remembers your tabs and also remembers the buffer, which is yeah, if you, unusual. Yeah, if you have uh, a strip halfway down and it, you, you forget to, to, to save and close your session, it's okay. I mean, you will not lose anything. It yeah. will stay there for you uh, after you realize that you, you miss it. <laughs> exactly. You're like, oh, I didn't save. Oh. No. Also, if you crash, you know, if you're, it's constantly saving your session. It and if crash? you crash, it I, never I, crashed. I, but I, I'm, I, I'm saying if something I, else crashes. The, I, yeah, I was about to say, I, I never had a crash with Sublime Text. Yeah, I have text. never had a crash with Sublime Text. But uh, if you, if your system crashes because you did an infinite loop or something silly, uh, <laughs> yeah. then uh you you're welcome to just open yeah. Sublime again and all your stuff is there. It's great. Awesome. And projects are the same thing. It's just basically saving your session to a file. So you say of a project and it's gonna remember it. It's gonna be a dot sublime project file. Just put it somewhere that you know. Um 
and uh, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, you and save then, and you close all the tabs, and but later you want to reopen yeah. all the same tabs, you can do it exactly. And if yeah. you you typically when you open up a fresh installation of Sublime, you're going to have the sidebar, which is over here. You can hide it. it; shows you your open files. You can also rearrange your tabs, which is kind of nice. Um, and in here, you can throw in a folder, and it's going to let's see, like I don't know my packages folder. And and it's gonna be there, and you're gonna have everything. This is my Sublime packages folder. It's kind of got a lot of stuff. And you can just open your files there, and you can read them. You don't even have to open them. You notice that when you click on one, it's not actually showing me the the tab yeah. that it corresponds to. It's kind of open. And as soon as you try to open it, it's gonna be a tab. So that's just to like see your files and then if you if you regret adding a folder you can just right click and remove from project uh, do not delete. press delete folder because that is doing what you think it's doing yeah <laughs> it's giving a reward or something uh i don't know if it gives a warning i assume that it does no, i don't want to try I was it. saying uh, a reward like oh a rewarding extra, yeah extra like surprise to 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 be so uh, destroy uh, oh i see no <laughs> i don't i don't think so okay uh, anyway you can remove the folder from projects if you change your mind later on and when you save your project, that's going to be saved with you. And projects are constantly saved. They're, you don't have to save anything And once you save the file. And then it's going to be always in your recent projects. And uh, you can just keep going there and just open it. It's great. And yes, yeah, so Sublime, Sublime contr uh, no, Package Control is awesome. It's a really amazing add-on. So Sublime has this concept of packages. Yeah, which is I say plugins um well i mean they call concept, them they call uh, they like, call them packages so yeah. i'm going to call them packages but it's kind of like soft image add-ons so to oh, speak yeah it's the equivalent of that yeah if you need to yeah in soft image terms will be yeah uh, soft image terms it's an add-on it's an add-on in sublime terms it's a package and in packages you can you know save the folder and give it to a friend or whatever but there's a central repository from which to install packages, which is yeah, great. It's very and it was done by a third party, which is why it's not included in Sublime mm -hmm. by default. But yeah. it, there's only one guy who's done this, and he's made it super nice for everyone else. And if you look up Sublime Package Control on Google, this will be the first thing that you come up yes. with. And if you click Install, you're going to go down here. Uh, note that there is a special version for Sublime Text 3, but we're using version 2 right now. And it's very simple. You copy this this question of a line of code <laughs> that looks like typically I would say do not copy and paste and run code from some random website, but this guy is yeah. trustworthy. Uh, and what it's doing is a very short piece of code that downloads his uh, add-on and extracts it and installs yeah. it. And after you did this first time, you open the door. <laughs> to awesomeness. Exactly. That's what you do. So you copy that and you open up the console as I described before, control uh, tilde or the uh, kind of the what do you call this this little key here i don't know it's a little accent it's the same the same one on the tilde key and the american keyboard or the one below the escape key so you got that there and you just paste that in and you press enter i've already installed it myself so i'm not going to do that but you press enter and then you wait for it to stop outputting things and of course that uh, to uh, to escape the console you just press ask the escape key, as you might expect. Yeah. And once you have this, it's super easy. You open up the command panel, which is Control Shift P, which is your general panel. Anything you can do in Sublime, pretty much, you can do from here. And it also tells you all the hotkeys, which is super useful. And, um, and then it's autocomplete, so you can yeah. you can start typing like LDA package control stuff is prefixed by package control. So you start typing PACA, and uh, you can do It'll do like multiple auto completions, so you can do PACA install, and then you can press enter, and it's gonna say at the bottom loading repositories. It's gonna do a refresh. It's gonna take a few seconds. Yeah, it remembered me a little bit like Linux. When yeah, it's very the, much like you use, the same concept and, as Linux. Uh, yeah, you have all these repositories, and you yum install blah blah. Yeah, like yum or like apt-get or yeah, exactly. all of those. Yeah. And uh, the, a while the nice thing reason. about this uh, package control, the first one, it's that it handles for you the repository, so you, you it's kind of more visual. Think, oh, what happened here? Oh. There are not packages available for install. That is it, something happened here. 
Yeah, probably you have all the packages already installed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you I, don't need to reinstall anything else. I don't think so. Um, let's see. Let's try again. Let's try. Um, Oh, there we go. I don't yeah. know what happened there. Yeah, it was a bit slow. Maybe for the recording. It, it yeah, is, maybe maybe the recorder is messing yeah, up with it. Yeah, because it's going so slow, it's not normal. <laughs> yeah, my apologies. So um, we have here the a list of stuff you can install. It's almost endless, so you kind of want to narrow yeah. it down. Like if you want to deal with HTML, you have a bunch of HTML stuff. If you want to deal yeah. with Git, you have a bunch of Git stuff. Yeah, exactly. Which is awesome. Uh, and there's uh, several flavors of, of Git Yeah, things. we... But yeah, we're gonna we don't get lost. We have a little list. Yeah, we have a, a small list of a couple of ones that I, I really like. And uh, I think uh, Miguel probably appreciates as well. Yeah, some of them are uh, new for me also. So I'm learning yeah. while I'm, we are recording here. Yeah, also note that uh, in, the pack, in the install packages list, it's excluding the ones you have already installed. So if you're trying to type one in and you're like, it's not there, you might already have it installed if you are ahead of me. So if you do package list packages, you're going to see a list of installed packages. You don't have to get all of these, but I'm going to mention a couple of these that I, that I like. Um, just a really quick rundown. Uh, buffer scroll remembers your, your scrolling. Yeah, we'll provide the list. Yeah, we'll, we'll provide the list. Change quotes lets you change from double quotes to, to single quotes. The code foo is pretty cool. It, it searches Stack Overflow for your question that you select. And then it finds the highest rated snippet and then yeah. pastes it back in. It's kind of like cheating. Yeah, snippets and this thing. And <laughs> boom, you super awesome code there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you have a stack overflow on your side. Then you have uh, file diffs, which is super useful to, to, to do a diff, which is a, a standard uh, way to differentiate text files. And it's going to can do them between the open files, between saved files, uh, the existing buffer. It's a lot of options. It's really cool. Git is the the Git extension for Sublime. It's the the one with the shortest name. Then we have Git Gutter, which is a huge favorite of mine. I'm going to show you in a second. It basically highlights on the next to, next to the line numbers anything that's different based on on the current Git state. It's really cool. Package control, of course, you know what it is. It's already installed. Pretty JSON it will make JSON pretty if you have a. It will indent it nice and and, and so on. Snake is a is a lot of fun when you're really angry at your code and you're like, ah, why aren't you working? Yeah, we'll review one by one. Yeah, we'll review one by one. I just really want to run down really quick. Sublime System Image is my custom stuff that I'm going to share another time. And uh, Sublime Linter, it will highlight mistakes in your code, which b basic mistakes like syntax or you're not using a net variable and so on. I'm going to explain indentation. that. Indentation. Yeah, indentation, a bunch of general things. Super calculator just does math based on your selected uh, math in the the actual text view, and then trailing spaces deals with trailing spaces, which is just emptiness after a line. Which I, I find for me it's a pet peeve. Like I don't like people to leave random spaces in their code. Yeah, I don't I, like when I, that happens. I don't like myself doing that. <laughs> yeah, and this this highlights it. So when you have that installed, it, it's like bright pink and like ah. Yeah. And I can do Leading. Control Shift P and delete trailing spaces, and then it's gonna get Ooh. rid of them. And this is Git Gutter over here, okay, but I'm so gonna show you in a second. Uh, so let's let's kind of go through the list. Okay. Um, cha so change quotes, very simple. Sometimes you have a lot of things, and you have a an obsession with having the quotes be the same. Uh, sometimes I am like that, and it's gonna do change quote, oops, change quotes, and it's gonna change the quotes from one to the other, and you can run it again. It's gonna be double quotes. Sometimes, uh, in the case, for example, of you, uh, like if you have, let's say, yeah, like if you have some, I think if you have a string. Yeah, a string. You can with have, a, uh, for example, if you use double quote and you have a string inside that have a single quote, it will include it on this. Uh, yeah, like string. if you. So it's a way to to keep. Uh, I think when it changes it, yeah, it will also change your. Your um, you'll escape your existing quotes, oh, which is nice of nice yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then if you want to keep cons the quotes consistent throughout your code, it's an, it's an easy way to do it. So do that. And uh, the next one was code foo, which is really yeah. cool. So code like food makes you ultimate. it's like kung fu but for code. You're like, oh, like oh, how how do I reverse? I mean, I know this one, but how do I reverse? 
um, reverse a string, oops, string in Python. Like, oops, I got to spell correctly. And we will have something for that too. Uh, and it's control alt R once it's installed and bam. And what it actually did is it actually searched Stack Overflow, which is a awesome yeah. website. It found a question that resembled your string. Yeah. Found it, found the highest rated snippet, pasted that for you as a comment. And then you can uncomment it. This and now the, you know. Yeah. So this is the hello world. It's all hell world. <laughs> I, I cannot. <laughs> Draw it. <laughs> I think so. There so now you know how to reverse hello world. Wow! And you can ask any, and you can ask something more complex. Yeah, I will use other like a functional reverse or something. But this is a, well, really no, that's a, that's a, that's the shortest way to reverse a line in Python. Yeah. So you don't need to know, to know anything about Python. <laughs> Only ask. You need to know how to how to ask the right questions. Yeah, exactly. That's it. <laughs> how that's to Google it. the right questions. Exactly. Basically. But it's a it's a it's an awesome little little idea, and I, I love that someone's made that. That's great. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's um I remember me it's um in the South Park movie the the one of the the alumni asked for for a stupid question or something, and then they say it's not not uh, stupid questions, it's only stupid people or something like that. <laughs> so I think it here is it's clearly <laughs> a good example of how you can do yeah. It. <laughs> Um, for for uh, git gutter, which is my other favorite, git just gives you git commands, which you, you can just do git things. Um, uh, like commit Like or... Yeah, git add. Actually, uh, do I even have it installed? I might not have it installed. But anyway, you can do all your git commands from here, um, from the command panel. You, there's also a sidebar git, which I'm not even sure if I have installed. I don't think I do. Yeah, I don't have it. I have it at work. Sidebar git lets you do git stuff from the right click menu which is very useful oh. if you if you like gui yeah, things exactly. um you can also i think this may be the one no i think it's a different add-on that does the command panel shortcuts but anyway git it's very useful we can talk about that another day but the git gutter thing is really cool if for example i have I have this gear line from a repo and i've I've modified things here, so this is this is how it was originally. So first of all, I've deleted my trailing spaces, which I've done that. And you can also toggle the highlighting of them if you if it bothers you and you can't touch someone else's code, which happens sometimes. Um, and here you can see it's a little little blue and uh, no, blue no it's a little yellow, yellow a yellow oh. square. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no 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 I'm good. Uh, no, there's a yellow square here and uh, sometimes it's purple i'm not sure what purple means but most of the time it's uh, yellow i don't know why i'm saying blue i think it's because it's right next to this <laughs> word in blue <laughs> and, and uh it, it you tells you that the line <laughs> yeah it tells you that the line is is modified and if you do other things like add new lines yeah new lines or if um, you delete a complete line from let's, exactly let's say delete one of the uh i don't know documentation lines or yeah for sure let's like delete these comments over here for example then it's going to say that it's it's going to show me these very subtle red markers and they're, they're at the top of one line and at the bottom of the other line it and tells me that in between these two lines something has been deleted yeah it's when you remove a picture from your wall that has been there for 10 <laughs> years and <laughs> yeah. it's these 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 marks that remember yeah that like the, the, the dust the dust square yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and then the plus green signs in, indicates new lines and so, and all of this ha happens in real time, which is amazing, and it's super useful. Sometimes I open a file that I've been working on at work, and I didn't commit yet. I didn't I didn't save my changes, and I'm like, oh, well, what was I doing? And then yeah. I can see, oh, okay, yeah, I was adding that line over here and doing this thing yeah, here. Yeah, it's like a mini Git real time thing. Oh, it's a, it's a real time Git diff, basically. Yeah, exactly. Because you can do a Git diff, and it'll tell you what's different. But this is showing you right now what's yeah. going on. It's great. It's my favorite add-on by far. Um, there's another one to indent XML. I don't really want to show that. It's very simple. Yeah, um, you work with a lot of XML files. And yeah, if you have a lot of XML or if you're writing a plugin that saves a lot of XML and you, you want to see it in a more humanly readable way with all the right spacing and indentation, you can run the command from the command panel. And um, one of my 
Oh yeah, so Sublime Linter is also there's a pretty JSON which just makes JSON indented as well. It's like the yeah, indent XML like, but for JSON. Yeah, Sublime Linter is a really nice one, which uh, there's a few linters. A linter in programming terms is a program that sprinkles uh, little comments about your coding style. Yeah. And sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's telling you about syntax. Sometimes it's telling you about style. Sometimes it's pointing out uh, that you're not using something, or uh, or yeah. your indentation is completely wrong, or yeah, let's bunch say, of mistakes. For example, like yeah, import. Uh, something like uh, import OS like we have yeah here. like if you have something. here I'm like and you are not using that all in your code this uh, OS for anything yeah. you say what the hell are you going importing this yeah so for example I print hello and I'm like import OS and I'm not really using it so I hit save and it's like hey you got something here and I'm like oh what is it I look down here and it's imported but unused I'm like, oh, okay. I, I like this. Uh, you import everything just in case. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably shouldn't do that. But you might be modifying code and moving stuff around and you, and you forget that you import things. Yeah, or just reusing code from another function. Exactly, I yeah. Think it's very common that you take a Or you, you give it the wrong indentation, for example. Yeah. So and it's like unexpected indent. What what the hell so are you doing? It, <laughs> so now Okay, you, sorry. Exactly. So it helps to... Reuse. And so you can see sometimes certain mistakes stop it from evaluating other mistakes. So like the indentation pointed out didn't didn't point out that the OS yeah. didn't get found. So sometimes some of them will block other errors from appearing. But that's fine. You just yeah, look through your code. <laughs> it's funny. You just follow the rabbit and <laughs> yeah, one after exactly. the other, after other. Yeah, and 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 if you have this and the git gutter, they will they will make, get mixed. I'm not sure which one takes priority, but uh, it's a matter of. Yeah. Going up and down and, and seeing your mistakes. Super useful. And it also points out the um, uh, Python, what is it called? The PEP Python. Uh, I'm lost. And what? There's something in a Python coding style. It's like Python PEP, PEP 8. PEP 8. Style guide, yeah. It will point out all of these uh, mistakes that you might make. Um, the PEP 8 guide. Uh, I think I forget what it what PEP stands for. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, Python enhancement proposals. Oh. Um, it's, and it's, it's, what it is actually is like a lot of it is style, and a lot of it is uh, in actual proposals for new features. But much of it is like here's how we think you should be working. How, how you think we yeah. their code should look. Yeah, it's a kind of standard way of writing. Yeah, for Python. For, uh, Python. for other languages, you have other things, and yeah, you can make up your mind, but. All of these, this huge index of different like codes and things, this is all stuff that most most of this is is uh, checked by uh, the Sublime Linter package and any lin any linter for Python will check these things. It's a lot of a lot of silly things, uh, but they're super useful. And that is that. And one of my favorites is the yeah. this. Okay, all of our favorites, man. You you cannot say oh, one of my favorites. Okay, okay, they're they're all they're all okay. favorites. Oh, favorites. It's okay. like when you have sons, you, you cannot choose between. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there's one package called Snake. Oh, and... <laughs> yeah. Well, I correct now. His is favorite. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is, I know. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Sometimes if you if you have a, the, the way that the guy describes it is if you're really angry at your code and you just want to just have revenge on your code, you can play Snake on it and it's control. You install a package called Snake, and then you go Control Shift Alt S, and you get an actual Snake game. Yeah. And it's actually growing the more code it's eating, which is amazing. Yeah. And it's actually drawn walls on the sides of your code and all the way to the bottom. And you can just keep growing and growing and see how high, how how much of a high score you can get before you crash into a wall or yeah. yourself. So you can see the oh. You crash into your wall or whatever, yeah, and over. you get your Snake score. And you. I'm sorry, I was about yeah. to say about the word. <laughs> did you screw your, your code now? No, I did not. It, the add-on is super nice, and it makes a new window that, that with an unsaved file called snake. Uh, and it copies your buffer. It adds the walls. And you have all the little holes that you make. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh... And, and what's funny is that the, the syntax highlighting is still working at the same time. So the color starts to change, and the code starts to er like to look wrong. Yeah, and it's just it's just. Can, can you run it on the test one, a small one, so we can? Uh, uh, yeah, well, it'll be, I'm probably gonna fail. Oops. Why? Because uh, it's a very small wall. It's gonna be super tiny. 
Yeah, you fail. <laughs> <laughs> I fail. Uh, yeah. So it's it's as big as your your document. So yeah, maybe here you have another chance for. So it's you a little a little harder. Oh, you oh, see, oh. Where is my code? And sometimes it's going faster when it goes up. And I don't understand why. <laughs> okay, I think. And it's, it, uh, we, I lose. We are spending too much time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just a, it amuses me. Uh, yeah. Um, and when I'm really angry at my code, it helps me relieve some stress. <laughs> It's much better than those squishy balls. Yeah, we need to do the, the Arkanoid version. <laughs> yeah, uh, someone needs to make Tetris and Arkanoid. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see that. Uh, and the other one, it's a very simple one. You can do some math. Sometimes you want to do... Yeah, this like super calculator. Finding out how old I am or <laughs> whatever. And um, Yeah, 22 plus 5 plus 1. I'm, wow, yeah. that was tough. Yeah, it's really hard. So like... Uh, you do some math, like 2 plus 2 or whatever, or, or plus 10, and then you do Alt-C, and it's going to select the, the nearest uh, formula. It's actually going to scan your cursor, and it's going to find the closest formula. Yeah. And then you, once it's selected, or you can select it yourself first, yeah. the, it will they, calculate it. They use uh, locations like eyes? <laughs> Not exactly, but <laughs> they use uh, regular expressions, which is black <laughs> magic, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, oh, regular expressions. We need to do another video on that. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know if we can. Well, we press, we, maybe you need to... I, I think we, we need to speak backwards to, to understand yeah. regular expressions. Yeah. <laughs> they are the, the only, only uh, people who can speak with the devil can speak those language, those expressions. They're, they're so confusing. They're terrible. Um, and then you also have the trailing spaces thing that I already showed you earlier. And just uh, going to run down through a couple of the hotkeys that we're going to show you in the description. And I know this video is getting a little bit long, but we're having a good time. Yeah, showing you this hotkeys. Hotkeys, yeah. So, of course, the opening the console with Control tilde, um, and then that's a Python console, so you can do whatever you want in there. You can also do uh, Control Shift P for the command panel. The easy way to remember is P for panel, and uh, Control G to go to a particular line. A particular line. Say you're like, oh, I, don't, I think I have an error in line eighty. You're like, okay, line eighty. Oh, that's it. And apparently, I do have it. <laughs> error in line 80 in this case i have some this is working progress code for something else that i wasn't doing um you can also have uh going to a function which is super useful you can yeah. uh, control r will cycle through the functions and you, even even yeah, if it's a class yeah, exa exactly other editors used to have to like a list or uh, yeah and and i kind of i that's one thing that i miss uh from other a couple of the other editors is a more um a slightly bigger display of this but I, I still really love Sublime. Yeah, so. once you get used to that, it's, you get it's used to it, really so. fast. And it, it auto-completes, so you're like, oh, reset, oh, there it is, and you press enter, and you, you're yeah, in the exactly. line. You, need to serve, you have many, many functions that it becomes yeah. faster. And sometimes you're even, uh, you're, you want to like consult what's what's in another function, but you don't want to lose your, your, your cursor position. You go to it, and you're like, oh, oh, okay, that's what it's doing. You press escape, and you go back to where exactly. you came from. It just uh, focus the, the, the screen on that place yeah. and later it goes back again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's really great. Um, what else we have? We have going to anything, which is control P, which is, is again autocomplete. So, uh, it, will, it will go to a file. It will go to a string in the file. It will, it will do a lot of cool stuff. Um, actually, no, I think it goes... I'm not sure if it goes to it. Uh, I think it goes anywhere. Anyway, moving on. Uh, control L to select the line. Very easy to remember. And it works in multiple cursors, so you can put your cursors in different places yeah. and select lines. Very useful. Uh, control Shift L. Control Shift L. Um, oh, yeah, this is really useful, too, if you have um, something like... Uh, I don't have an example here. Like maybe this one. Like this, and you have a big selection, and... You're like, oh, I, I want to change the word root here, and and and, I, and sure you can you can do this, but maybe it has a maybe it has a different word. Maybe there's one of these is this, and one of these is that, and you just you don't really know. So you can select everything and do Control Shift L, which makes it into an individual. Um, expands your selection to lines to individual lines. Yeah, exactly. It's it like it, so now you get a yeah, cursor exactly. at every line. Yeah. So you can go there. So now they're they're at the end of the line. So I can, if I do that again. Sorry, oops. If I do that again, I think if I do, yeah, if I do the le the left or right mouse uh, mouse button, the arrow keys, 
left to right arrow keys, then I can get my um, my cursor where I want it to be. And in this case, I have I have some nice uh, spacing here, but oops, looks like I lost my. Excuse me. There we go. So now I can I can put my cursor right at the at the word, and I can use Control Shift left and right to select the the word and now have it selected and I can change it for all of them and it's very easy yeah definitely um we have uh, more shortcuts yeah more short shortcuts yeah maybe uh, we can jump some yeah absolutely we'll uh, post it on on the yeah on the video but uh for example for me can I I found this one I found this one the control J yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, if you if you start with a a list of items, like let's let's try over here, like yeah, like let's say you have uh, um, like uh, I don't know, red, blue. Yeah, let's do some num some uh, colors. Like that blue. So you you can easily write your um, list or your uh, dictionaries. And it's multiple it's, lines and it's nice and clear and then you can do control J and exactly and it becomes like one them. line so it, it's easy sometimes I I, I I I want to write some um, very long list and yeah. it, it becomes too, too long to have in one line and where you can use escape key and some stuff to, to go one line but this is another uh, very convenient way to to handle this long list yeah, and, and, and yeah have better visualization absolutely and then one one benefit once it's actually selected is that you can actually press the square bracket and it's going to be encased in brackets. Ooh, because Sublime is amazing. Uh, and and there's a bunch of things that it. Well, yeah, you can do the same thing with quotes. Uh, if you, I think if you select a word and highlight it, and you can do quotes. You can also do it with bra uh, any kind of bracket, pretty much. It's very useful. <clears throat> Um, what else we got? Let's see. We have, uh, yeah, moving lines, which is I one of my favorites as well. Uh, you select some lines and you go Control Shift up and down, and you can move those lines around. And also useful is to change the indentation of those lines, uh, which is with the Control left and right square brackets, and that changes your indentation, which is very useful. And what's cool about it is that yeah, you can also do the classic shift tab yeah, or tab yeah. that works but what's cool about this one is if you're somewhere further further along in the line you can still use it and it's going to work and your cursor is going to stay where the where it was which is very useful um and what else we got here we have uh control okay we have, <laughs> we have a long controls. list yeah. <laughs> i apologize yeah, um maybe we should uh, okay, let's see. So yeah. All, I like really the F6. Yes, there's a spell check. Spell check, especially because I don't spell yeah. really well English. F6, so. there's a Ooh. spell check. Okay. Um, apparently a passer in a spell drum, but it's not. No. <laughs> it's a name. But uh, really well yeah, so if you do like distribute button, the, yeah, uh, like you can change that uh, just by right clicking. Buttered. <laughs> yeah, and then you press F six again, and you you're done. So it's great for if you if you don't yeah. speak English and as a native language. More F. We have um, Elf um, eleven that it's full screen, but yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm recording in a small portion yeah, of my screen, so it's not gonna be appreciated. Here. Yeah, exactly. But you, you just try it. F11. Yeah, try F eleven, and then also try Shift, Shift F eleven. It's yeah. beautiful. It's just code and nothing else, and it's so yeah. peaceful. Yeah, Alan say it's the send. Uh, zen shoot, mode. Shoot, zen mode. Yeah, I call it the Zen mode. Yeah. Um, because it's it's like peaceful. I just want to put some like background music and code away. No, 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 no. <laughs> death metal there. No. Yeah, <laughs> or death metal if you like, if that's your thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, and then some a couple of basic things so you can find all of these code keys. By the way, are sprinkled throughout the interface. Yeah. So exactly. you can find them. You can go through the menus and discover new things. Um, just so you know, there's a couple of things with the layout. You can have two columns. It's just nice. And there's a bunch of hotkeys for that too. And you can move files between them. There's hotkeys for that as well. Columns are great. I like to see my code side by side. Sometimes I have my notes here, for example, like yeah. my hotkeys that I'm trying to read from and uh, some other files and whatever. And you can just drag and drop between them to move them around. And when you're 
even if you have other stuff in the tab, you can combine it back to one and it's going to merge them into yeah, one exactly. line. You so, don't lose anything. Yeah, yeah. You, don't, you combine to one, you didn't lose anything. No problem. And, and you can also split horizontally as well, which is yeah, nice. Yeah, you, you, uh, you can see there. Uh, yeah, if you go to view yeah, or layout. No, I was saying on, on our oh, document, sorry. you have the uh, nice... Um, <laughs> yeah, here's my cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah, well, it's what we're going to post later. Yeah, we're going to post so, these. So, so um, you have the Zen mode and you have... Uh, Alt one two three to move around in your files, which is nice. Um, you can control page up and page down to uh, move back and forth between tabs, which is nice. Uh, moving lines up and down to control. Uh, actually, sorry, this isn't this one's wrong. Yeah, it's control shift up arrow. Whoops. Whoops. Um, let's fix that. And uh, also uh, another one that I that I, it's not here. So if your if your cursor is somewhere else and you want to focus, you can do Control K C, and it focuses to the Ooh, center. I should add this one. Yeah. Control what? K and C. Control There's a great K. feature in 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 Sublime. And by the way, all of these hotkeys, and you can explore all of these yourself, are in their key bindings default, and you can make your own in the user one. Don't touch the default one because then it's gonna get overwritten in a in a new version. So you can see there's a lot of hotkeys in Sublime, and it takes a you don't have to learn them all, but they're very cool. And there's this great feature, which is amazing. You can have a pre-hotkey and then your hotkey. So you can essentially have almost infinite hotkeys. Because instead of, instead of yeah, like blocking... It's, like, it's a hotkey that gives you access to a submenu of hotkeys. No? Kind of, uh, no, not exactly. Uh, no. You can, ah. it's, it's a, it's a, not the explanation I was hoping for. Uh, it's more like you initiate a hotkey and then that hotkey opens opens up to other hotkeys so to speak so you can have other combinations so you can do things which you might not think possible like kk to to uh finish the the line so say you're you're here and you change your mind about this and you want to start over you can do oops um you can do kk so control k and then k again and it's like in most programs you already typed Control K. You cannot type anymore. Yeah. Well, so, but here, but here is like a you, sub you, sub hotkey. It's, yeah, exactly. I'm not sure what they actually call them. What what the feature oh, is my called? My was good, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say no. Oh, mm. sorry. So you can see all the explanations here. It's a big JSON document, so it's very easy to edit. Just change the names here if you want. Uh, of course, do it in the user one. Remember that the, anything you do in the user ones gets overwritten on top of the default ones. Okay, so, so you can you can you don't have to delete it from here. You can just re redefine yeah, it. That's good. And there's a ton of stuff here. Just yeah. just take a look and when you have some time. It's great. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically it. I think. Um, yeah. it's, just a, it's an almost an hour. I yeah. apologize if you if you're bored out of your mind, and uh, hopefully you learn something and yeah, you can see why we like it. it. Yeah, I did it. Thank you, Alan, for this uh, super long and nice <laughs> explanation. <laughs> Yeah. And see you in next videos. Yeah, see you around. I'm gonna uh, be posting explanations for the balloons soon. <laughs> it's been it's been taking a while because I wanted to work out a couple kinks of it, and uh, I'm happy now with how it is. So I'm gonna be talking uh, about it. Tease people, please. <laughs> yeah, I keep teasing you. Uh, I just want to make sure I explain it really well and I. Yeah, it clearly. yeah, it's not an easy one. It yeah, it's, a, to it's be I need to I need to study it and and make sure it's all in my head. So okay, anyway, thank you, Alan. Thanks and a lot. See you next uh, video. Yes, see you guys next video. Bye-bye.